Hey guys, thanks for joining me again. Today I'll be showing you a product that I use when I compare different DACs. Sorry it's taken me a while to get a new video for you guys, but I was sick for a few days, I caught a little bug, and I think I might have lost like five or six pounds I didn't eat for a few days, but I'm eating again, everything's great, so I got a video for you today. When I first started comparing products, I would use these two units right here, both of them from Solo Peak. This is the Solo Peak ST42. Now I don't use this guy because I have a better solution that I'll show you in a second. This is a line level switcher. You have lines in and then lines out. This one has a manual selector to choose your line from one, two, three, four, and then you can send it out to two amps, amp one or amp two. In the back, you have RCAs, so line level inputs. The second unit I would use would be another one from Soul Peak. This is the P2, and it just has one toggle for amp A or amp B and this one is speaker level inputs. I have a different solution that I've upgraded from this, which I'll show you in a different video, but today let's talk about the RCA level. The new product that I've been using for a little bit is the Doke L3. This is an awesome little unit because it's super versatile, much more so than the Solo Peak. Just like the Solo Peak, this is a line level selector, but it does much more than that. First, I'll show you the front panel. The front panel has a couple of VU meters here, and then we have three buttons, line one, two, and three. What makes this unit so versatile is that you can put one line in and make it go to three lines out. You can reverse that, which you can put three lines in, make it to go one line out. And finally, the best part about it is that it has a loop feature, and this is what makes this very unique and if anybody is gonna get one of these units without the loop feature, spend a little more and get that loop feature. It's super cool and I'll show you how it applies in a second. But first I'll show you the front again. This unit uses USB-C for power. So I'll plug in a USB-C cable in the back and we have our light. So on this unit, on the light output, we have a little knob and if I turn to the right, I have 10 levels of intensity on the light, which is awesome. So I can go all the way high and then I can bring it all the way down to its dimmest. So let me bring it out to about the middle. One, two, three, four, five. If I press that same little encoder, now I can go over to switch the color and I counted about 65 different colors that you can scroll this guy through. So really cool, you can make it match any of your components. You can get that Macintosh green if you have a, that kind of equipment or any other color. I keep it on the blue because most of my devices more, have more of a blue light. Um, but yeah, it's super versatile in that aspect. So 10 volumes on the brightness and around 65 different colors makes it for a fun feature. Next we have our inputs here. So I'll talk about the back first and then we'll come back to that. We'll unplug this unit and switch it around. So there's that USB-C for power I was telling you about and this is the encoder. Again, you click one to select the intensity. You click again to select the color. Then we have our out, our send three, send two, send one, and our in. The most common mode that you would use the L3 in would be three in, one out mode. That's where you would have three audio devices sending signal into this unit and sending one signal out to let's say your amplifier. This is useful when you have a preamplifier that doesn't have enough line inputs. In this case, you would add each of the units into the return portion of the unit and the out to your amplifier or preamplifier. Once you do that, you can hit input one, which will get you your first DAC or turntable, two for your second device, and three for your third. One of the reasons I switched over to this versus the other unit that was manual is now I get remote control with this one. Now, my preamplifier does have five channels. However, on my preamp, you have to go from one, two, three, four, five in that order. In this case, you can jump from one, two, three, two, one, bounce back and forth. So when I'm comparing two units, I can one, two, one, two really quick to hear those differences as opposed to having to go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. It takes a little bit of time to go back to the original signal, but in that time you can capture the real differences in the sound quality. So jumping back and forth quickly helps me catch the differences in tones very quick. If you have a preamplifier that has a remote control with all the lines there and you can jump back and forth quickly, this isn't a feature that you would need on this one. But this one again has more features. The second way to use the L3 would be the one in three out mode. In this case, we're going to input, let's say a DAC or an MP3 player or something into the input right here. So we're setting signal in there and we'll use the sends out to send to three different, let's say amplifiers. In that case, we have one signal and we can have any of those amplifiers 
get signal from this unit so we can be powering different areas of our home or we can just have them all in our living room and we can select which of the three we want to listen to. That mode won't be as common, but it's nice that you do have flexibility for it if that's what you're looking for. And finally, we have the loop mode. And this is why I think this is the most flexible unit because of that loop feature. In that case, we'll send signal from a DAC into our in. Our out will go out to our amplifier. We can get an EQ. We'll send the signal from here to our EQ and the signal back from the EQ to our return. On the next one, we can have, let's say an effects processor. If you ever did any DJing or producing, you'll know there's a ton of different effects processors. We can add reverb. We can have uh, compressors or the old school exciters from Behringer to add a little flavor to our music. We can add a different EQ and then we can maybe send a third out to a two bass preamp to give us a little tube flavor. Once we have that set up, we go to the front here. Whatever we choose now will go through this unit here. And the best part about it, again, that you have the remote control, so I can go from input one to two to three. But that's not all. We can also get that same signal. Let's say we had the EQ hooked up to one and we had something on two. We wanna add that into our chain also. You simply two second press and now we have that signal going to two devices, which adds to a ton of creative control. Maybe a little more useful for DJs and producers, but super fun to have around the house also to play around with. I think it's super cool to have flexibility. You don't have to use it this way. You might be a purist that doesn't wanna do anything to the signal and that's fine. Sometimes I'm in that mood as well and I just want a super clean signal from whatever I'm getting. But other times I wanna play around with some EQs and I don't mind adding a little flavor to my music to have a little fun. I feel it's part of this audio hobby. And you can of course add all three to the chain and we can also deactivate instantly. This unit right here has a bypass switch on the EQ, but with the control here, I can simply have it set to let's say one. And if I have nothing on two, I can just hit two and now I instantly deactivated this unit. So I can sit back from the controls and activate and deactivate this unit with the remote control. I'm sure there's EQs that have an on and off bypass feature with remote control, but I think you're gonna be paying like $1,500 for the shit EQ that has that feature with the remote control. Here you can have the Loki or the Lokius in line here, and now you can bring it in and out of the chain instantly from the comfort of your chair and hear those changes you've made. See if you like them, go back up, tweak where you like, come on back and uh, activate and deactivate again. So again, the best part about this is the flexibility that it gives you. You don't have to use all these features, but one of them is definitely gonna be helpful. It's definitely become my go-to over the solo peak simply because of the remote control feature and the looping aspect of it only makes it better. So if you're looking for a way to integrate an EQ, this is awesome. A little heads up though, if you're working with an integrated amplifier that everything plugs into that and it does the processing and has no return, this is not gonna be useful in that aspect. That's one of the downsides about integrated uh, that you're kind of locked into whatever is built into that unit. There are a few out there that will have a send and return feature, which is awesome. I'd love to see that in every amplifier, but I believe it's something that people just aren't asking for. So these big manufacturers aren't adding it into their units. There's nothing that can be done from that except for customer demand. Mm -hmm. But again, this is a great solution. I'm super excited that Doak has considered that in their little repertoire. I know they have a unit that doesn't have the loop feature that just has the RCA ins and outs. I suggest jumping up to this unit here for a little more money. It's well worth the upgrade. As for build quality, nice aluminum. As always, a solid build, no issues there. I wanna say it's coming in at around $120 on Amazon right now. Well worth it. These little guys without the remote control, we're coming in around 80. So I hate to say it, even though I, uh, this did give me a nice amount of service for the moment, I would not recommend this at this point. Definitely all the way with one of these Doak units. Doak L3, awesome little device for what it does. I hope this was helpful guys and I'll see you on the next one.